This is John Malcolmson, coordinator for the Center for Ecumenical and Interreligious Engagement at Seattle University. You are listening to the Art of Spiritual Direction workshop with Dr. Valerie Lesniak speaking about definitions of spiritual direction. I encourage you to take a listen. As many of you know, spiritual direction has many, many, many definitions. So let's just look at some of them and see what we can find. Janet Ruffing, in her short dictionary article, defines spiritual direction as an ancient aesthetical practice in which one person serves as a guide, a conversation partner, a co discerner with another who seeks to explore, reflect on, and grow in their spiritual life. Now, let's just take this apart because I think it's a classical definition. It's a wonderful definition, and it leads us to a lot of very, very solid foundations for spiritual direction. The first, spiritual direction as an ancient aesthetical practice. Okay. Ancient. Well, that means ever since the dawning of humanity on this cosmological journey that we're all on, seems to desire or want and need to express this connection to living reality that we're involved in. So it's an ancient quest. Uh, it didn't start with Christianity. It didn't start with Hinduism. It didn't start with Buddhism. It didn't start. It started in those ancient caves where human beings drew the world around them as they saw it. So this ancient practice, of course, emerges and we do get this sense of, you know, the guru, the disciple, the shaman, the initiate, uh, the rabbi, the elder, the anakaram, the director, the directee. So it's an ancient form, uh, an ancient really process that takes on different forms. Okay. One, aesthetical practice. Now, that sounds kind of, you know, uh, strange to our contemporary ears, but I think it's really important to, uh, to, to see this kernel, this kernel of truth that's in there. Asceticism actually means training, exercise, you know, it's an exercise that we do. Uh, so an aesthetical practice would be something that we actually undertake in order to form, shape, um, practice, it, that it gets into your bones. I often think about, um, you know, going to the gym. Now, that uh, gym is going to the gym is a perfect example of an aesthetical practice. People are very, very much concentrated and they are training. They are building up their bo bodies. Or you think of playing sports. Asceticism is in sports all the time because of the care and the, the demand of development of some kind of inner skill. Now, Janet Ruffing moves on from the ancient ascetical practice of spiritual direction to somewhat in a more contemporary understanding that we're getting more to the heart of, in which one person, one individual, serves as a guide, conversation partner, and co-discerner. Okay, let's crack that open a little bit. 
one person serves. So it's a calling, it's a ministry, it's a gift, it's a charism, it's a way of uh, helping the community, the person to grow. So it's in essence a vocation, a calling. So this one person serves as a guide. Okay, a guide. What does a guide do? Well, a guide sort of leads, doesn't it? In some way leads or maybe doesn't lead ahead of you, but maybe le leaves behind you. Uh, that's kind of the sense I have of what we mean about guiding. Um, you know, uh, Teresa uh, Vahavala, um has this uh, experience that she writes about in her work about Jesus being behind her, being behind her. I always felt, oh, wow, what does she mean by that? Well, it's someone behind who can kind of gently help you along. So if we take that notion of a guide of helping you along, um, I think that is one way we can understand it. Next is the idea of a conversation partner. I think here we're probably more attuned to this understanding of spiritual direction uh, because uh, I'm a big one for going back to the etymology of a, of a word. Okay, so conversation, in the sense of conversation means to turn something around. So if you're a conversation partner, you're turning things around with each other. You're kind of playing, if you will, with whatever is being spoken. So that's a lovely, I think, concept or image of a spiritual director, this idea of a conversation partner. And then uh, this notion of a co-discerner, someone who comes along with you when you are actually sifting through some life experience, some issue. So on the director side, those are some, kind of some of the Im images, the guide a conversation partner, and the co-discerner, okay? Now, the next part of the de definition that I think is very, very important is with another who seeks. Another who seeks. Okay, this word about seeking, about looking for, about searching, it, it's talking about intentionality. What kind of conversation are we going to be having? It's about whatever the seeker is seeking. What are we going to be guided about? It's whatever the person is um, trying to find their way through. What is what we're going to be uh, looking at in discerning? It's whatever that person is bringing to the table. So this intentionality of seeking is so critical to really the functioning or the, the, the stream, the process, the way spiritual direction moves. So this person who is seeking really is anticipating that we're going to be doing some exploring. We're going to be doing some digging around. We're going to be doing some moving. We're going to be perhaps just pausing to say, huh, that looks new. Okay. We're going to be doing some reflection. We're going to be doing some, let's say, Pondering, pondering. And it's about whether or not, I think this whole notion of that we're being ex explorers, we're going to be reflectors, but the most important thing is that we want to grow, to move, to make a change, mm -hmm. to either go deeper, perhaps, more intimate, so growth is going to take on a whole 
a cluster of possibilities. So I think that definition really does open up a whole lot about what spiritual direction is about. Thank you for listening to the Art of Spiritual Direction workshop with Dr. Valerie Lesniak speaking about definitions of spiritual direction for the Center for Ecumenical and Interreligious Engagement at Seattle University. Visit us and engage more content at seattleu.edu slash the center.